Support for Radio Friends comes from OsteoStrong. Improvements in bone density, strength, and power can be achieved by weekly five-minute no-sweat sessions on their four-spectrum machines. These isometric robotic machines safely emulate high-impact loading on different parts of the skeletal system, which stimulates activity in bone-building cells. Balance and agility can be improved by two-minute sessions on vibration plates. Every session is supervised by a trained coach. Learn more on Facebook or call to set up a complimentary wellness assessment and session. Good morning and welcome to Radio Friends on Thursday, August the 4th. We have book author and professor from the University of Missouri, soon to be retired professor. Indeed, <laughs> indeed. Less than a month. This yeah. is August 4th, I think. John Howe, good to have you here. Good to John. be here. Good to be here. Uh, so how's it feel getting ready to retire? Actually, I've been thinking about it for a while, and it feels pretty good, actually. Yeah. yeah I think I'm more or less prepared. Right. Um, but the thing, I give you a little bit of advice there about retiring. You end up, you think you're going to have all this time on your hands when you retire, but you actually have less time. <laughs> you have less time than when you were working. There are a lot of things I want to do. Yeah. I could fill a day easily. Yeah. I agree with that. Okay. So today we're going to, we're going to talk about... Uh, is this in your book? The, the it, it is my book. Uh, the book that is called The Foolish Corner. Yeah. And the topic we're going to pick up today is called Loss Aversion. Loss Aversion. And I think it ties in perfectly for the way things are going on in the stock market right now. Absolutely. So let me back up and start with a, a simple definition. Okay. Uh, and that is loss aversion is essentially a greater sensitivity to losses than to gains. That is... Put another way, losses seem to hurt us more than gains of a similar amount um, give us pleasure. And so we're averse to loss. That's why it's called loss aversion. For example, if I were to say flip a coin, you can lose $100, you win $100, most people won't take that because prospectively, the pain of losing 100 is greater than the pleasure of gaining the 100. That makes so you sense. turn it down. Okay. Right. So people pretty consistently behave this way. Um, so that's what that's what loss aversion is, and it has a number of finance implications, as you were as you were suggesting. So let's think about here we are in early August. So the first seven months of this year, there was a lot of volatility in the stock market. Oh my! And of course, it was down considerably, depending on the index, maybe twenty percent or so. And so, so what does that mean? So what does loss aversion and, uh, have to do with this? And, and how might loss aversion lead us to make some bad decisions? So I have a couple of examples that are financial examples. And that is, one is that um, loss aversion, some people want to hang on to a losing investment. And, and what they're thinking mentally is if I sell it, it's a final admission that I've lost the money, that it was a bad investment. And so many of your viewers and listeners might have had their own experience. They don't have to raise their hands, but they say, you know, well, I'll sell it when it gets back up to the price that I paid for mm -hmm. it, right? Whether there's any significant chance of that happening or not. And by the way, that's a phenomenon called anchoring, where we tend to anchor on or use as a reference point the stock price at which we bought the price at which we bought the stock. So it may be wise just to sell bad investments, get the tax uh, write-offs and so forth. But again, kind of admitting that we've experienced this loss by the act of selling it may be so painful that people don't do it. So yeah. they hang on to losers longer than okay, they should. Okay, I want to clarify right here. He's not. You're not giving any advice telling people what to do to either... Nope. Buy or sell. This is just, we're just talking. So there's no advice going on here. That's right. Legal, you know, financial, yeah. professional of any type. So thank you for that. The other thing, though, is that sometimes there's an opposite effect. So when we see the market plunge, we see a lot of people feeling the pain of that, and they simply sell everything. So there have been, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure your, your guest, Alex. Um, Alex LeBrun, you know, we were talking was, about that You know, a couple that, that's weeks a ago. tendency that people have. It's like, oh, this is painful. I'm just going to sell everything so I don't, to avoid all that future pain. But that typically is not the right thing to do either. Just, I mean, the market goes up and down. If you have a long horizon, then, then you probably just want to hang in there. Yeah, over the long run, over the long run, things tend to go up. That is correct. Um, so again, not giving you advice on what to do. This is something you have to decide yourself. But what Alex and I were talking about the other day is that I just decided when I got my statements in the mail, because I had a feeling they were going to be, I knew they were going to be bad. 
I just put them aside. I didn't open them up. You know, I think that's great advice or a great way to go because, you know, if you open it up, you know there's going to be some losses there. You know there's going to be some pain. I think in my book I recommend it. you can look at your accounts no more frequently than quarterly. And you might even want to try just look at them once a year um, because, you know, in the meantime, again, you open it up, you got a loss. You feel really bad. You have a gain. You feel okay, but it doesn't really, you know, in the third quarter, you got a loss again. You feel, oh, that's really that, painful. Everybody has to decide for themselves Absolutely. what you want to do. And you okay. can seek some professional guidance in all this, whether your risk exposure is correct or not yeah. and, and so forth. So so anyway, that's 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 another uh, implication. So let me let me tell you, let me take it, if I can, just a little beyond the finance, finance areas. So there was a study done of um, soccer fans in the, in the U.K., or in Europe someplace. And they, they carry these little beeper things, and they were asked uh, when they got beeped to say, uh, how, how good are you feeling? You know, essentially a one to 10 or something like that. But what, they, what the researchers did is they, they only tapped these people um, after a soccer match. Um, and what they basically found is that soccer fans, when their team loses, they really suffer. And when their team wins, of course, they're happy. Okay, but we see this asymmetry again. We see, in fact, what these researchers um, reported was these fans were about twice as unhappy when they lost as happy when when the team. Really? Came. Yes. So it's a it's a weird form of loss aversion, but it's still a loss, right? And it's almost like we're looking to be unhappy. Well, you know, I think you know that's a, that's a good question because that kind of raises the issue, like, well, why why do we seem to be built this way? And this does seem to be a pretty human aspect across cultures and yeah. and so forth, kind of generalizable in that sense. And it probably, you know, a, a reasonable conjecture is that, you know, when you're when our ancestors were living a little bit more precariously, you know, kind of the phrase often is out on the savanna. The, the negative things that can happen can be incredibly bad. You know, if you, right. you don't find water, you don't find food or, or whatever. And so these losses, you know, we're really fearful f uh, of them. So this can go back millenniums. Oh, it I think so. Back I, many, many, many years. Absolutely. To the way we are built and the way we're wired internally here. You know, um, I think physically and uh, mentally and emotionally, we ev evolve more slowly than the environment changes. Yeah. And so we haven't quite, you know, we're never quite caught up in that sense. So it's interesting. Uh, do you, you cover all of these different subjects in the book? I do. Okay. Yeah. If if people want more information, they can go to your website. And I, what's on the website? What's on the website is first of all, I'll say all of my Paul Pepper interviews are there. Oh, they're on the website. They're okay. on the website. So you can uh, bend, you can do <laughs> binge watching if you want to there. <laughs> but access to my to my newsletter, to the books, and some podcasts that I've been okay. On. So go to www.js. H O W E dot com, and that'll get it. There's, there's okay, a lot Okay, John, to read thank there. you so much. Always a pleasure. A pleasure to always, have you. That's great. And next time we see you, you'll be a retired professor. Indeed, I will. Team. Okay. I'll be enjoying it. Best of luck to you. Drop me an email, pepperp, Missouri.edu. Bye bye.